So you are here because you want a stable food supply in your colony. Hell yeah, I'm starving. Then you're in luck. Just watch this video all the way to the end and you'll be fine. Awesome, thanks man. No problem, let's get started. Last time we talked about progress and the only true way to progress is research. So we're gonna put down a research table and we are going to research batteries. Why, you ask me? You will find out if you watch this video. Just, like, trust me on this, okay? How to get food. We can get it from animals or plants. We'll talk about the plants first. We can play specialized growing zones and there we can choose which plant to grow. On average, each colonist will need approximately 10 cells of food. We're going for 42 at the moment, so we have some extra for in the winter. We will start out with rice because this is the fastest growing crop and will need food fast. We only have that many packaged survival meals left. We're also growing some cotton, but what to do with that we'll handle in another episode. To get meat, we can go and hunt. If we check the wildlife tab, we can see which animals are on the map and we can choose to either hunt or tame them. As we need food quickly, we will go and hunt. Please do keep an eye on this percentage. This means how much chance there is that an animal will go and seek revenge. Are you hunting that muffalo that is part of a pack? Watch out. They could all turn Manhunter and hunt you down. So help our pawn. With 25 legs, we can save her life. I'm quite sure. However, if we now start hunting animals, we have one major problem. The meat will spoil. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, that's dead mud. Wrong. We don't have mods over here. We play vanilla. And what do we do in vanilla? Exactly, make room size freezers. And let's not forget about the airlock for the sweet stability and temperature. So we are going to plan out our freezer, our butcher room and our cooking room or kitchen. And since we are still in the early game, we'll keep them rather small. Remember, this is just the starting part of our base and we can always expand later on. We will make sure the butcher room is separated from the kitchen because the butcher table is a dirty, dirty thing. And you don't want your colonists to get food poisoning, do you? Time for a status report. We now have a kitchen, a butcher room, a freezer and we have crops and we can hunt animals. All we need now is some power to get it all working. For power there are several options, but it narrows down to two. It either uses resources or it doesn't, and it's renewable. If it uses resources, then your pawns also have to refuel said resources. This of course takes time, so we'd rather not do that. So that is why we're going for the wind turbine. But as you probably know, there's not always enough wind for power, so we need to save it somehow. Battery, maybe? So at this moment, our pawns have plenty to do and we can do some reorganizing. We just made a stockpile zone in the freezer and we can now select what we want in there. Of course, everything that spoils quite quickly. After selecting all the foods that go in there, we're going to remove those from the general stockpile. And of course, to actually freeze the foods, we do need something that will cool the freezer. And now for a useful trick. On the right hand side here, you have the roofing icon. When pressed, it shows the current roofed area of our base. We are going to remove one tile because this is going to be our chimney for our AC unit. As you can see over here, the AC unit has a red and a blue side. The blue side makes stuff cold, the red side is the exhaust and it tends to get rather warm. To improve the chances of a good meal, it's obviously very good that they can see their ingredients. So let's install a light bulb in both the butcher room and the kitchen. When we select the light bulbs, you can see there are actually power lines from the windmill to the lights. As long as we see those power lines, this means the lights will get power. And correct, the AC unit is not. And I know, I know, this is simple, right? Oh man, we need to move the wind turbine closer. Of course not. To solve this issue, we're actually gonna play some conduits. Just like the blue lines in the windmill, the conduits will transport power. And everything within reach of the conduit will get power. And how convenient. Exactly at this moment, our battery research is done as well. As you can see over here, the wind turbine is already producing a ton of power. However, we're definitely not using all of it. So let's store something in the battery we just researched. There are a few things we need to keep in mind with batteries. For one, they need to be roofed. Unroofed batteries in the rain will explode. Number two is one of the events of RimWorld is a ZZ event. 
This is a short circuit which will drain all battery power. So what we're going to do in the future is once this one is full, we're going to place another one and gonna uninstall this one. We will then save it near this place so when we have a Z event and we don't have any wind, we still have power in the batteries. In the next episode, I will give you guys an explanation about bills. Also containing a neat little trick I'm quite sure most of you don't know. Next to that, we're going to check the first event in Romworld. Don't forget to subscribe and tick the little bell to get the notification when the next episode will air. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!